we made it to Seattle! Hi, I'm Evan Mernigan from the Forward From 50 show. And this week, we're going to go over the things that worked and the things that may not have worked so well on our move from Phoenix to Seattle. Well, our move went about as perfect as it could. There were a few hiccups and a few things that we would revise if we could redo it again. So that's what I'm going to go over today. The things that worked well and the things that maybe we could have tweaked just a bit. Number one, buying all the same boxes. We had mostly small boxes and the movers loved it. Now the second thing that worked absolutely great was we did outsource on both ends of our move. Now we used a company called Hire a Helper. It actually isn't a company, it's a website. I read a ton of reviews and that was priceless. In Phoenix, we knew we'd need help because we're moving in the middle of summer and moving in the summer in Phoenix is absolutely brutal. We hired two guys for two hours. These two guys absolutely amazed us. And even though they had had three other moves that day and it was 112 out, they still were smiles, great attitudes. I was absolutely stunned. We did the same thing on the Seattle end. We have a really big hill. There are 23 steps from the street up to our front door. And then once you get in the house, there's stairs as well. So we hired again two guys for two hours. Best money spent. The Phoenix portion of it, it was $270 plus tips. And then on the Seattle side of things, it was $230 plus tips. Now the third thing that we did that worked out great was we booked hotels before we even left Phoenix. That way we were guaranteed to have a room at the end of the day. Now, here are the things that we would tweak if we had to do it over again. Plan an extra day. We had read about that, but I figured I'd already allowed enough time with planning four days between Phoenix and Seattle. But I was wrong. There were two things that I hadn't taken into account. One is with a trailer, you were supposed to go 55 miles an hour every mile. Not easy. Another thing that surprised us is we were much more tired at the end of every day than we anticipated. Had no idea we would get that tired just driving. We finally decided that we were going to make it into a five-day trip instead of a four-day trip. Adding that extra day, we had to do a little logistical maneuvering. I called the hire a helper company in Seattle that we were going to use to see if they could offload us a day later. And we were really fortunate. They were able to squeeze us in for the next day. And having the trailer for an extra day wasn't a problem. Second thing that we would revise if we had it to do over again would be to make sure that the vehicle that we rent was big enough. When our movers got there in Phoenix, they looked at what we had planned on taking and what our trailer size was. They didn't think they'd be able to get everything in it. In fact, they thought they'd maybe be able to get about half of what we planned on into that trailer. They got in everything. We were absolutely amazed. So do you have any moving tips you'd like to share? That'd be awesome. Put it in the comments below. All right, there are a few bonus things that we learned along the way as well. One of them, I think you can hear right now, ends up this house, it's on the flight path for Seattle International Airport. We don't really mind airplanes, fortunately. One other thing that we discovered that we evidently didn't quite filter well enough for in this house was I had thought that one of the filters I'd chosen was air conditioning. Our first night here, it was about 85 degrees in the house. I couldn't get the air conditioner to work. Well, lo and behold, there isn't any in this area of the country. It's very rare to have an air conditioner. I was very sad. One other thing that we learned was when you are booking a truck or a trailer, do it from an actual dealer, like a Penske dealer or a U-Haul dealer, not one of the neighborhood dealers like Bob's Bait Shop or something like that. Now, the reason for that is that an actual dealer, there's going to be more inventory. If you do something like Bob's Bait Shop, they don't have as many. One of the things I noticed that never used to be an issue is when you reserve a trailer online, it says that it, they can't guarantee it's there. With the particular thing I looked at, they wanted $50 to guarantee that my trailer would be there on top of the rental price. If you want to check out the tips I had before moving, definitely check out the iCard above. And thanks for hanging out while we went over the rest of the tips that I learned from the rest of my move. 
Hope you have a great week and see you in the next video. Now we <sighs> love that plane noise. Hi. This is just not working.